All right, so we got a special viewer build for you guys today. Uh, we are in Nova Scotia, which is the end point of our road trip with the 55 and Bronco. We're here with Peter and with uh, Graham. And we got a farm full of goodies here. Um, <laughs> we kind of want to showcase some of those, like this uh, manless sea dew. <laughs> it is pretty cool. What is it? It is a, call it a marine drone. Along with a bunch of other cool stuff on the property. I can't wait to show you guys this one. Here we go. We've got exciting news for you guys. We have a freaking laser in the shop. <laughs> X Laser Labs X1 Pro. Uh, we convinced X Lab to give another one of these away to one of you guys. Head to debossgarage.com and click the link. You get a free entry and then we got a pile of new merch on the website. Every dollar that you spend is an entry to get one of these in your hand so you can start welding in your own garage. And while you're there, you might as well submit your rides and uh, show us what you're building. When it's finished, you might get a call from us if we're in the area because we'd like to do a viewer build and, and feature it on our channel. So this is cool. <laughs> this was this was your uh, university project. Yeah. So when I was going through engineering, uh, at the end of your program, like the final year, you're supposed to do a two terms or eight month design yeah. project. This was much bigger of a project than like what normally <laughs> students were expected to do. Yeah. So we actually had to fundraise money to to buy parts and and okay. so on. So we had a lot of sponsors giving us stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, but all the fabrication was all done by us uh, and the technicians at the university, wherever we had to. I just pull, there's just no pull last, yeah. Okay, yeah. Right on, does, does it work? Uh, I should. It uh, should. All right, well don't tell me how it works. Actually, we'll, we'll <laughs> plug in the battery. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that part. Yeah. <laughs> so over the last 12 years, it's had three different engines in it. Okay. Uh, Cause it was never, uh, Never optimized, but yeah. Um, Is there a choke? Mm, I like actually, the balls on the throttle. It's not. Uh, yeah, that throttle doesn't work right now. Oh, okay. That's this okay. the latest engine swap didn't get it far enough to. I, I see. I see some uh, some questionable welds there. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna have to take it up with uh, our friend Albert at university who welded this for us. So. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. That's okay. Yeah, there wasn't much penetration there. No, this, this was already rusty, so it was not connected from here to here. Don't be sorry. Actually, you can still drive it on three wheels. I think you should. Okay. Actually, have a look underneath, because uh, the seat is purposely not built on. Oh, but it's a BMW seat. It's heated. Oh, nice. uh, yeah, it's from a 7 Series. So, you know. It's purposely not bolted <laughs> down. I, I don't believe that. I think it just. <laughs> so this runs two hydrostatic pumps, similar stuff you would see in like a big uh, ride on lawnmower. Yeah. And then an extra gear pump for running the suspension and charging the circuit. So it's two closed loop uh, hydraulic pumps for driving. And then you have the levers here that basically do the tank steering. And then these buttons fire electric uh, solenoid spool valves to run each of the cylinders in your suspension. Yeah. Um, yeah, so this basically, most of this came from Princess Auto. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the did valves. You ever, did you ever submit it? 
Yeah, I was in the inventor's fair, but this was like w way early on, like yeah. 20, 10 years ago or okay. so. Um, yeah, I should revisit it. Like I said, this was in pieces for eight years. Yeah. Because when I left school, I didn't have a garage to keep it in. So we just took it apart, put it in my dad's place. Okay. And then I kept moving between shops. Finally got this place, like, okay, this is perfect to have something like this. Yeah, yeah. But five years I've been here and literally just, just put it together for you guys on Friday. <laughs> 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 That's awesome. Uh, we really appreciate it. This thing is awesome. When I bought it, one of the ang the outdrives was blown. Yeah. And I couldn't buy the right one. Yeah. But the later models, like they were the same, just the spacing was different on the sprocket. Okay. So I flipped the sprocket over and made a three inch spacer. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> to line up the track. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. So this is a 59. And it purrs like a kitten. Joysticks instead of like a bunch of levels. Yeah, yeah. Stuff. So, anyway, everything's a project, but it's fun. Yeah. So this is a 2002 Bayliner Capri that uh, someone before me repowered with a 1.9 liter Volkswagen diesel. Um, I don't know what the top speed is yet because I haven't got a chance to get it running properly. But uh, yeah, I was just kind of fixing up someone's unfinished project and. Uh, <laughs> It yeah, doesn't have like wet oh, yeah. exhaust manifolds, so. so things were starting to get a little toasty. I yeah. remade this pipe so it's a little closer because it was like another inch higher. Yeah. Uh, but the way it is like comes out of the turbo and then the water enters here. So yeah. this part is not, not right, cooled, right? right? right manifolds right. are not cooled. Right. And if you're running this wide open, it yeah. would probably ignite eventually. So. <laughs> Ah, so, so the proper thing to do would be to make wet, wet manifolds, <laughs> like make custom ones. <laughs> nice. uh, we met Peter back uh, last year when we were passing through the Land Rovers and he was working on this little girl. So we started off with a sea -Doo and put a bunch of electronics on it and now we can send it out on the ocean to do what we wanted to do, so. <laughs> That's pretty cool. <laughs> let's, uh, let's take a deep dive into this one, this is literally. <laughs> This is part of Dahazi's project to uh, map and respond to oil spills. Right on. The idea is to send this somewhere that people don't want to go or can't, yep. and to respond faster than otherwise be possible. Nice. There's an oil spill out in the garage there, so uh, can you go? <laughs> So what did this start out as? So this was a Sea-Doo Spark, uh, one of the basically entry-level four-stroke gasoline sea that people buy to zip around for fun. We stripped off the top and added a bunch of electronics and a couple actuators, so now we can drive it remotely. And then we built up an autonomous control for it. So you could literally give it a coordinate on the map, just like you do a drone, and send it out and it's gonna get there. And the whole point is for scientists to be able to deploy instruments and do water quality monitoring. Um, this was originally built for oil spill res uh, response. So we're running like a full drone suite through a laptop and like an Xbox controller to, okay, to yeah. drive it. I hear that works really well for uh, ocean stuff. <laughs> when you look at consumer goods, when some sold in tens of thousands and yeah. it has to be robust because people would return it. If you can take that and make it work for you, you're way ahead than trying to you know, make some on your own. That's right. why we started with a sea -Doo, right? It's inexpensive, they're tough as nails, right? Yeah. Uh, so we knew that the hull, the engine, all of that would hold up. So we just kind of built up on it as opposed to trying to build something completely from scratch. Right, right. right. Yeah, uh, and this thing is built to be very inexpensive. I mean, there are similar drones out there that are kind of custom built for yeah. customer. We're talking order of magnitude, more money to commission that. And everything's kind of modular in a way. Like I said, you can change the payload on it. Yeah. Uh, the electronics, you know, they're all kind of plug and play to each other. So if you want to outfit it for a different purpose, like you're not locked into a lot of the stuff. So in the back of it, we have a winch so we can put like a, a water sampling device or a, uh, 
or some sensors, and then that deploys it into the water. Yeah. Um, we can also deploy these little submersibles that are completely unmanned. They look like a little torpedo, and that's what goes into this tube. Um, <laughs> The whole thing has Starlink comms, so it doesn't matter how far offshore you are, it will still communicate with you. You can get high definition video back. Yeah, originally being built for oil spill, it was built with oil sensors installed, but by just changing the sensors out, you could look at chlorophyll or salinity levels. Okay, um, and, and that's that other product that you guys were making was all their syring syringes, so that goes down into the water. Yeah. An actuator sucks up everything into the syringes and then you got your samples to... Yeah. And you could watch like the sensor reading and when you see your, your signal change a lot, you can take that water sample right then and either confirm that the sensor reading is as wild as you think it is okay. or just like track a change okay. through time or through space. Wow, right on. Have you, have you thought about the, the Navy and just removing this? Oh, well, that would, be, that would be quick. We do have some contacts in the Coast Guard. Uh, they're looking at more of a life-saving application. Yeah, yeah, we're Canadian, so. Yeah, we have to be very peaceful and friendly. Yeah, yeah. autonomous in the way that it'll get to where it's going. Uh, what if somebody gets in the way? Ocean's a big place. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is a prototype. There are yeah, yeah, plans yeah. to refine it and put, uh, you know, collision avoidance on it and, and so on. We are, right now we're testing it with literally like a kill switch that's hanging on someone's neck. Yep. Uh, that if it gets out of range or like we just push a button and the whole thing shuts off. So okay. uh, yeah, there was, uh, there was a fair bit of thought put into it, but yeah, there, this could, this could do some damage. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it will do full speed of what a cedar would, probably more, uh, because right. it has less weight on it than yeah, if yeah. a person was on it. Yeah, you don't put 250 pound guy on there with his, uh, well, his girlfriend or wife, and then uh, I'm, I'm sure she boogies. <laughs> yeah. So how long have you been working on this? I think this started four or five years ago when I still worked at the university, and then uh, the project kind of slowed down. Then uh, it got restarted when we got some funding for the oil spill response research. So I would say like it's been pretty active for two years, okay. about four years since the first prototype was built. Right on. This was designed to be kind of like a mothership for whatever equipment scientists would want, right? So yeah. that back payload deck, we configured it for putting the sampler in the water or launching the submersibles, but you could take that off and put something else on it. Okay, uh, yeah, yeah. We were even thinking like, uh, this would be an application for the Coast Guard for search and rescue. Say there's a boat going over, if you had one of these parked yeah. in every little you know coastal outfit, this could probably get to the people sinking faster than the Coast Guard could mobilize right. and could launch a life raft or something, right? right, uh, right. Or could at least you know, keep track of where people are and so on. Right, so right. there's a lot of applications. But the collision avoidance system would be great for that. <laughs> <laughs> Has he got some uh, wicked stories about uh, trying her out? Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, it's, it's always fun. Uh, yeah. <laughs> electronics, uh, you can't really hit with a hammer and see what's going on, so they can act weirdly when yeah. when you least expect it. But, right, uh, right. There is a hole in the hole right now. This was our yeah. first, uh, our first uh, run with it. Uh, uh, we climbed up okay, an yeah. armor stone shore. The kill sequence wasn't set up, so when like, lost power the throttle will go to 50 percent yeah instead of a zero yeah yeah uh, when like our controls lost power but the jet ski was still on so, right 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 you know uh, just an oversight was like yeah instead of de-throttling it would just go to like the middle <laughs> <laughs> which the middle on some with no weight on it is still scary fast so. yeah yeah so basically you guys take the top off of a cd and then you've got your own this is this is carbon fiber uh 
Yeah, there's uh, a layer of carbon fiber, and I think it's two layers of Kevlar. Okay. And we still have the mold, so we can make another one in a day or so. Okay. Very cool. So just you take the top off, and and what do you do? Just like tee into. I know some of the bobcats and skid steers. Like you want remote control, you just unplug yeah. the main harness, stick your thing in between, and yeah. and then and is it something similar? So. There's two connectors here. That Oh, that's where the handlebars that, get plugged in? Yeah, okay. so this is like where the fly-by-wire happens. The only thing that was mechanical on that we had to figure out was steering. Right. The steering is just a, a cable going from the handlebars. But okay. Yeah, so you could pop the top off, take out all the stuff we've added, and put a regular c uh top with the seat and the handlebars, plug it in, and it still drives just like a c would. Okay. So it was completely non-invasive to the c so it's still computer warranty. engine fuel system still the same fuel tank like we... so you don't void your warranty <laughs> <laughs> i have an idea to build something well similar function but much slower much cheaper even like okay. take like a little zodiac and then outboard and then yeah, yeah. automate it so i'm actually probably soon going to start working on a prototype for that okay that i could kind of get behind because it would be a lot simpler, a lot less dangerous and so okay, on. Yeah, yeah. It would be just for like near shore coastal work okay. uh, where you don't need the high speed. Uh, yep. Cause right now there's a lot of these boats around, but they're all electric and you know, on the water, like if you have to go back and recharge every few hours, it doesn't make sense. Right. Right on. So where do we get a hold of you if you're, if anybody's uh, interested? Well, uh, probably best to reach out to Dalhousie University because they are, uh, they are the owner and the, the, they're running this project, uh, but my company's Pragmatech Inventions, right there. So nice. easy to find me online. Uh, we're also working with a great partner out of US uh, called Blue Robotics. They make a lot of components that are inexpensive and easy to work with yep. that made it possible. Like things like these waterproof hatches and a lot of connectors and cameras, uh, stuff that normally used to be really expensive. All right. so. You guys have seen lots of viewer builds. We don't care what it is. If it's got a throttle and it makes noise, and even if it doesn't make noise, but still has a throttle, we want to see it. So make sure you submit it to uh, debossgarage.com underneath our viewer builds, because we're in Nova Scotia now checking this out. And uh, who knows, we might be in your area and you can have a feature on what you're building. And what we're trying to do is just encourage people of, you know, get out there, have an idea, put it together, build it, and then enjoy it. Because um, it's it, there's all these, we're in an awesome age where you can basically, um, sky's the limit with uh, internet, AI, um, inexpensive parts that are now affordable. Um, it doesn't have to be a car or a truck. It could be a sea it could be whatever, and we want to see it. So remember, if you're not filthy, you're not rich, get out there and work on it because uh, nobody else is going to do it for you. Here we go.